Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel, hope you're well. Today is Wednesday, March the 13th. Well, it's March the 13th where I am, but where our guest is, I think it's March the 14th, which always blows my mind. <laughs> really happy today to do a live stream. This is later than usual. Thanks for joining us, especially everyone in the UK where it's really late right now. Uh, in the USA where I am, it's around 7 o'clock in the evening, it's not too bad and really appreciate you being here. Please share this with your friends and think of some questions. We're gonna do a live chat Q&A between the two of us, and then we're gonna ask you for the viewers' questions as well. I'm really happy about today's guest because it's Cole Clark Guitars. I've been talking about Cole Clark Guitars on the YouTube channel a lot, as you will know if you watch my channel. And today, I haven't met this gentleman before. His name is Paul Gale, and this is actually the first time that I'm meeting him and I'm, I assume this is the first time many of you have met him as well. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the chat. But without further ado, let's bring on Paul and say hi. How you doing, Paul Gale? Hi, Aaron. How's it going? I'll give you one of these. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I'll give you a round of applause. Great to meet you. So wow, I, I can't believe we've never chatted before. This is crazy. How you doing? You're in Australia, right? You're in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. People like me are um, usually locked in a cupboard for um, years at a time. So well, we don't look, we don't get to get out much. That's why I'm glad you're here. So for everyone watching, you're responsible for the awesome pickup, the magnetic pickup, the PG3, and the Cole Clark guitars. 
and my channel is actually about acoustic guitar pickups. So I was just telling a friend of mine today, my channel is kind of a niche of a niche of a niche, <laughs> but I love it and the viewers love it. That's why we're here. I, I presume you love it as well because you've spent your life developing these things. And yeah. why don't we get straight into it? Why, why don't we get straight into it? And then why don't you ta start by telling us like your background and how you got into guitar and more importantly, into electronic, guitar electronics? Okay, I'll try and give you a quick summary. I think when I was about 15, there was a, uh, a garden party with, with a, um, a band playing. And uh, I looked at the guitar player and I looked at the PA and I looked at the amplifiers and the effects and things. And I thought, I want all of that. <laughs> and so um, I pretty well was into electronics a little bit at the time. And I started to, I had a band and I started to build the gear for the band. We couldn't afford to buy um, expensive, well, we couldn't afford to buy the, the commercial expensive stuff that was already built. So we built our own speaker boxes and we, we did some band gigs to buy um, great speakers like JBLs. I built the desk and the crossover system. So I was pretty well versed in what makes a band tick. And and because we'd, we'd often buy X higher stuff and then it was too expensive to get it fixed. So I would learn how to fix it. And then when I pass it on to somebody else, they used to come back to me to get it fixed. And I sort of became the the uh, guru, I suppose, and, and the, the go-to guy to, um, to fix this stuff. And, and uh, I was also um, building a, a bit of a, well, part of a, a musical community. Um, there was a, a couple of friends of mine that rang music shops and I hung out there quite a lot and met other musicians, uh, did some guitar teaching, which also got me work because their guitars always needed doing. And then in about 19... 78 I decided that I would do it professionally so I opened a service department which um, I was a little nervous about because I had a mortgage at the time and I'm thinking will I be able to pay the rent and before we knew it um, we, we were, I surrounded myself with a lot of intelligent people luckily a lot of friends of mine that were electronic spods and guitar builders and and whatever and we ran a fairly um, successful service business probably from about 1980, I think that the whole crew was on board by 1981 and retired with me. Well, I didn't retire, but they did. It's one of those things, um, if you leave me, can I come too? And they go, no, thanks. You've got to keep working. But um, pretty well during that time, um, I, as the, the, the boss of the place, I suppose, um, I did everything from amp repairs, guitar repairs. I was at synthesizer tech for 10 years they took my fascination played keyboards a little bit in a band so i think that um that was the motivation there and um in about 2004 we decided to change our shop into a to a little bit of a venue as well and we were running workshops and a lot of the baby boomers this this wasn't um necessarily down to me i've i've sort of been um, I was trying to think of it this morning. I was like uh, riding my little tea leaf around in a very small cup. But um, there was hundreds and hundreds of guys that were basically kids had grown up a little bit. I was one of the baby boomers and in the right place. The guys would come in to buy some more equipment, seeing they'd sold all their equipment when they got married. And um, I found myself giving them guitar lessons. And before we knew it, we had a guitar club that was about 500 strong. A bit like a weekend warriors type thing where we'd have jams and and um, we do sessions of um, of of uh, um, musical workshops, if you like, teaching people things that they actually didn't know on the guitar in the first place, but all decided having a midlife crisis, want to get the band back together, and then um, after everybody retired in about two thousand and thirteen, I continued to work, and then. Uh, a good friend of mine who's um, one of the board members of, of Cole Clark, I always knew Miles. Um, I knew Miles from, he, they ran a very successful establishment up the road uh, called um, uh, Music Junction Blackburn, and they were the go-to guys for all the band, big bands in the schools and things like that. So they were very successful as well. And we weren't so much of a retailer. We were more of a, a, a service centre, but we did do a little bit of retail as well. And then... Um, 
John Brownrigg, who's a member of the board, um, came to see me one day and had a project for me to do at Cole Clark. Now, we didn't normally used to do outside projects, but seeing everybody retired, I thought I would go and give it a shot. And that was in 2016. And I keep saying to Miles, it was a, a six-week contract. And uh, I'm still on that six-week contract, so <laughs> I must have done something right. But um, my first job over there was um, trying to bring back to bring to life the digital preamp, which had been installed in a small guitar, and they thought I would come over to do that and ended up doing some bracing, rebracing of of um, that guitar. Um, but the, the sales tide was against us on the digital preamp um, front, and uh, after I'd finished the, the bracing things on pretty well, um, I changed um, a little bit of, of um, the design of a few of the guitars there while I was there. And then Miles, Miles said to me, um, can we, we're going to give away the digital preamp. Can we now revamp the analog preamp? So that's where the PG3 was born. And look, a lot of good um, electronics techs went before me and I didn't actually design that preamp, the, the original one. Um, my, the PG3 is an evolution of a lot of other good guys that have come before me, but there was a, a few things about it I didn't like, and it was time to make it a little more modern and make it a little more versatile for all of our guitar models. So I pulled apart the whole preamp and basically kept the good bits. And we, we were, my charter was um, don't lose the sound. So I, um, I kept, the sound and and I added some little configuration switches and I remember you making a comment one time um, before you found the little hot switch and I've, I've, I looked at the whole thing from a term of a guitar player um, insofar as the the um, when I inherited that preamp if you like um, it's got a mid-range scoop at about 3.2 kilohertz and it's designed there to take the the edge off, you know, if you're strumming, especially me, I, I strum with the back of my nails on an acoustic. I'm mainly an electric player, but, and, and uh, so they put a scoop in at about 3.2K, which takes the, takes the um, nastiness out of the piezo, piezo a little bit. And uh, anyway, my, my thing was when you're playing solo, um, you lose that energy. And it's a bit like, I thought of it like a, with an electric guitar, You've got a distortion pedal and one minute you're playing six strings in in a rhythm context and then you need to jump out and be a solo voice when you need to do a solo and so most of the distortion pedals do a, a mid-range flip it goes from a smiling eq where you're trying to clean up the sound of six strings to a, a mid-range push where you want one string maybe being the voice and you have to 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 um push up the mids a little bit to get the cut to get the presence out and so what I did was basically put a switch in, and um, there's a, it's a little bit more to that. There was a little bit of um, an expansion filter. I don't know what you call it, probably, but it's it's the opposite of compression. But it's it's basically like an expander, where it, it pushes the pushes the mids, but also um, the presence, the the upper mid the upper mid presence. And and uh, so when you drop the switch, um, all of a sudden you get that energy back that was lost um, before. So um, the little configuration switches on the side, most people won't see those. They're more for us, but if somebody wanted to change it, there's quite a lot you can do. It actually will be on the net shortly, I think, as to what those switches do if people want to be bothered. We don't really want people pulling out their preamps and whatever, but, hey, some guys are, are, are um, fairly good with that. They are, they're on the road a lot, and, and uh, I get a lot of guitar players who pull out their preamps and send them to me if um, they need mods or something else. And some of the early ones, particularly the two ways that people pull out and they eventually bite the dust because they, um, they get big drinks spilled in them. They get, they get all sorts of um, things, but how much do you want me to talk about the PG3? Do you want me to tell you how it works? And well, I got some questions for you. Let me come back. I think, I think we've lost sync with your, yeah. um, I think we lost some sync with your headphones. Do you want to try not using the headphones? Yeah, sure. Let's see. Let's, um, let's see what let's see what happens. As long as it's an echo, we're we're good. One, two. Let me see. We'll just try it. We'll try that. I just want to make sure there's no echo. 
so so um how about that is that okay that's good yeah i think we're good now that's all good. right so yeah the, the wonders of yeah, yeah. talking to talking to someone in another time zone another day it always blows my mind i look here's the thing yeah. so you as you just said the original cole clark preamp was already highly regarded by loads of musicians Absolutely. right so your job was then to come along and improve on that and i think what you've done from from my experience with it you know you've opened it up it just sounds even bigger than it did before yeah. and i i really like the new version a lot more actually to go let's if we go really technical yes there's i've noticed there's some switches on the side of the preamp when you take it out i assume yeah. they were to voice it for the different models of the guitars is that right sort of um just quickly there's there's four there's there's um there's a little dual in line switch with four four little tiny switches and there's also a slide switch on the left so when i inherited the preamp i realized that um the face sensor was out of phase to the rest of the electronics now that didn't matter because the way the face sensor was made the the little piezo slugs are inverted compared to the bridge pickup um but it, it was on my mind that if we you know we will be a we are already um an oem pickup uh, preamp supplier and i thought well if other people use a different sort of face sensor they may not be able to adjust the phase of it ours is a little um coffin shaped um, box made out of specific woods to give it a resonance and there's three little slugs piezo slugs that are the same as the six piezo slugs that are in the bridge sensor the difference is they're upside down and i always knew that and so the first thing i did was put a phase switch on it so that one probably doesn't do much somebody might like an out of phase face sensor but it's unlikely but it's there purely for um oem use but the other four switches are, are interesting because we have three different size um guitar bodies all have different volumes and in the little lady for instance the the ll model um the body is quite small and so the face sensor it becomes quite close to the bridge and it's quite loud so the first switch is an attenuator for that um face for the face sensor in the little lady so with with the first two switches are both attenuators for the face sensor so if they're both up yeah that will suit the little lady sorry that will suit the fat lady if the first switch on the left is down the the next size down from the the fl is the um angel the an model so the an again has got a smaller body than the fl so the first switch on the left just puts in a mild attenuation so that the the face sensor is evenly balanced with the output of the the bridge and the mic so um with the little lady the first switch is up and the second switch is down so it's the second level of attenuation and then if we needed to make something small like a ukulele again which we used to make ukuleles um then we've got another level of attenuation if both of those are done but the way that people play these days and tap their guitars um that is adjustable if they if they got a little lady and they want the the thing to be louder although it's it's quite loud off the the blend control so um basically the other two switches the the what happens is i better explain to you qu quickly how the if that if you've got time um explain yeah, to you quickly how the preamp works hmm. and then then the other switches become um you you understand wh wh why they're there um basically the 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 piezo runs out to about 13 or 14 k if the blend is off there's all these sensors are working at all times so with the with the blend off and the mic off you have a little bit of face sensor we didn't want to spoil the sound so we always want a little bit of ambience the face sensor adds a little bit of ambience it's it's located in one of the strut lines um one of the face braces and um because it's a little bit away from the bridge sensor it's not so immediate and it's also crossed over at 350 hertz so basically when it plugs in the preamp itself shaves off the 350 hertz under it and just allows it to do mids and uppers it sort of runs out after a couple of k the mid sensor because of its positioning and because of, of the way it's mounted in the guitar and then the um the microphone picks up after that so when you start to with both knob with both um the blend on the left the the i can see that thing in front of me there so the bridge face blend on the 
on zero and the mic on zero, you'll have about 10% of face sensor and about the same amount of microphone. So as you wind the bridge round towards the face, you get to 12 o'clock. From the 12 o'clock position on, um, rotary, turning it up, um, basically the high frequencies get shelved from the um, from the bridge. So it's basically a, a high pass filter. And that brings in the face and rolls off the tops of the bridge so that you get a mix there, if you like. So that's the first mixer. And then the output of that comes out to, through the EQ and the line amp. Now, as you roll the microphone forward, this is on the original preamp. So with all the switches up, um, sorry, uh, the two on the left up and the two on the right down. So one, two up, uh, three and four down. So as you as you wind that around, the the um, the high frequencies come off of the bridge. Now that mix then goes through another filter um, that the microphone can control. So as you bring the mic up, the mic comes in to about 12 o'clock. And then the microphone itself, as it turns around, will start to shelve the bridge and face blend. Um, it'll it'll probably roll off the, roll them off at about two and a half k. So they're only doing the low duties now, and the microphone's coming in. Right. So that that basically gives you some sort of balance. Um, what I didn't like sometimes was that the bridge face, as it goes past twelve o'clock, can start to dull the sound a little because the face sensor itself doesn't have a great treble response. So my first job with that, that little switch, the third switch along, can actually defeat that filter so that the bridge face stays mm -hmm. full range, basically. The bridge will be full range and the face will, um, will be able to just contribute its ambience and warmth, which is what it's for. So the, the, um, the next one along, the last one of position four, actually cuts the, the low pass filter uh, the high pass filter basically for the bridge and face mix so in other words if you had both of those switches off you'll find that they're there the bridge and face still do their blend the microphone blends in and um but nothing is is cut off other than the 350 hertz input to the face sensor if that doesn't sound too complicated for you and by the way, we're talking about switches that are inside the guitar, inside, inside, the, the, yeah. inside. They're hidden away from the user. And even yeah. I, even I haven't messed with them. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like how it's, you know, I've been dialing it in for, as it is, and I don't feel the need to mess with that. You know, I know some no. people like to tweak, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to go there. Well, maybe I will one day. Um, I, want, I want to ask you, um, first of all, the way those settings are in the picture, for anyone that's watching that owns one of these, is basically how I have mine set. I might have the bridge of face about one o'clock, just where that second arrow starts, yep. and the mic may be also in the same place, a slight mid cut. That's basically my settings on the screen, which is interesting. That's pretty well bang on. That's pretty well bang on where I run it. Right, very good. So, so we've, we found the yeah, same yeah. sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, because yep. I love, the, my favorite part of that pickup is the face sensor. That's for me yep. where the magic is. But if you run it too hot, then it becomes too much. Um, you've got to get yeah, that. Yeah. I've got to get the balance just right. But yeah. I wanted to ask you, since we're getting very technical tonight, what? A couple of things. First of all, what are those? Um, e the, we've got the treble, middle, and bass EQs to then sort of uh, tweak the sound for the room yeah. or the style. What are they? Do you know what they're you've set got to? About two and a half k, uh, about four hundred hertz in the mids, and the 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 bass at about hundred hertz. You know, your okay. guitar itself, the lowest frequency on a, a normal tuned guitar is about 80 hertz, 81 okay. point something or other, if you want to be specific. So yeah. so basically, the um, the bass is designed to, it. there is a shelving filter that cuts off below 40 hertz so that you don't, you don't pick up, uh, you know, uh, uh, amplifier hum and, and, and things that can get into your systems. And then it's pretty well... Um, nice and wide it's uh, probably each one's probably about three octaves wide like a typical 10 octave filter so the the base would be centered around about 100 hertz or so the mid-range would be around about 400 hertz and the the treble would be about two and a half k roughly where the microphone is so one of my i will ask i will come to our viewers questions later on but one of my questions i'm dying to ask you is lately i've been dealing a lot with uh 2k like 2k even in electric guitars acoustic guitars I, I find around that, which is like a D, um, I always have to go in there and notch that out as much as I can. Do you know the reason 
And do, well, do, first of all, do you agree with me that 2K is a is a problem with with guitars? And do you know the reason why that might be? If you do agree with me, um, well, it, for me, it's a lot broader than that. Um, you know, when people ask me about using um, some of the preamps that have got notch filters and things in there, um, the the um, funny enough, the, the you you talk about 2K, um, you're talking you're talking harmonics. Um, I don't want to deviate off too much, but let, let's just where I started. When you when you um, when you go into a room, you've got two problems. Number one is the first problem you've got. If you're standing outside with your guitar, then you can adjust the mid range where your presence is correct, and that's to do with your amplifier and PA and amplification and whatever. When you go into a room, now you've got two problems because you've got the natural. Uh, voice of the box trying to take over and you've also if you're playing in a little club that's got wooden floors and lots of reflections and whatever you've got that to contend with as well and i suppose in a way you can use the pa to do that and the the but the mid-range controls the presence so when you pull it back too much you um a bit like pushing that switch down on the guitar itself you move the guitar back you know, it's like you're moving into the back room instead of being right in people's face. Mm, now, range, yeah. um, I'm the 2K thing. I don't know if you look at the frequencies, I suppose you can say the frequency of the lowest that you're going to get about three harmonics out of each string. So the, the lowest string on the 80 hertz would be 160 and 320. Um, and then you move up to uh, the A string, which is about 110 hertz. And you've got, you know, 220, 440, 880, whatever. But on the top string, the top string's about um, 320. Um, so 640's the 12th fret. And then you've got to look at the harmonics above that. So the the, the 2K is roughly where the microphone is. Um, there's also, you know, from about one and a half to 2K is your typical point that your um, horns kick in on a PA. And so the crossover point of a horn is roughly about two to two and a half K. And so you'll find your little sure 58 when you turn it on and it's pointing too close to your monitor. It's probably going to take off somewhere like, I think, 1.2 to 2 K. Mm. So that's a frequency probably more down to the PA. Um, we're talking, I'm, I'm sure you're talking mic'd up. No, actually, uh, even even in acoustic guitars. I find that okay. can be a problem. For, yeah, it, like uh, if I record a guitar, I, I notch it out. If I'm on stage, I've, I've just gotten used to that. It might just be me. It might just be something that I've kind of latched onto. But I, I now yeah. go in, because I, I use in-ears now. One of the reasons I love the Cole Clark is because I need a very natural sound with in-ears. And many yeah. pickups can sound great from a PA, but not with in-ears because it's so direct. And I use the Cole Clark with the in-ears, and then I, I can really hear everything. So I go in there and shape it at the, at the, at the desk, you know? But, there's there's I mean, another thing that starts to happen, and I don't... I mean, I'm aware of it, and, and I'm, I'm lucky that I've got um, frequency analyzers and spectrum analyzers and things so that I can be guided by, um, you know, what I see. Like, just it's a bit like if you're recording on a desk and you've got one of those fancy equalizer things where mm. all the little lights can can jump up and down and whatever you you become aware of too much yes. um, involvement at certain frequencies mm. and at certain frequencies it can it can get quite cutting and i found out as i've got a little older and my top ends falling away i'm getting a sharpness in the mids now mm. just for the record there's not enough there's not much above 3k on an acoustic guitar that's worth worrying about mm. all right 3k so 3, 3k, the, 3K. wow well I, I did a did a, uh, a face when I was doing the, the face bracing. I did a there was a there's a very respected guitar builder here called Trevor Gore, and uh, he runs a course on modal tuning of guitar tops, which I thought of guitar faces, which I thought was quite an interesting topic, and uh, covered a lot of the things I was looking into at the time. And uh, basically, they talk about the the um, the three frequencies that that dominate the guitar itself and if you were to to make a a shape that fitted the whole top of your guitar that would probably be the the bass frequencies the low frequencies which would be around about 100 hertz or so and and the sound hole tunes roughly around that area too um and so then you've got the 
the they, they, they call that the monopole. So they, there's a, a fellow called Clandley. I don't know what his first name is, but he he had this idea of of, of sprinkling tea leaves on top of the guitar, and uh, <laughs> while it's obviously uh, face up, and uh, and uh, firing some frequencies at the top at the face, and where the tea leaves rest is is at at certain frequencies is where the little nodes are in the in the face so when you do the low frequencies you you're around about 100 120 hertz if you're really lucky your tea leaves run right around the perimeter of the guitar roughly out near where the binding is and if it's any in any further than that then your face is not working correctly and then the the second one the the dipole is roughly two circles around where the bridge is the edges of the bridge and there's your second lot of frequencies and they'll be three four hundred or whatever i'm not sure exactly the frequencies but they'll vary with every guitar and then you'll get the i think they call it the cross di tripod which is three circles across the bridge and so different guitars respond differently the the waves on a classical guitar run um in line with the bridge and the waves on a western acoustic guitar run from bottom up towards the neck so all these things come in as a factor and i'm not sure why 2k would be would be of interest to you but 3k like that's about three harmonics that are strong enough to cause a bother it's all over at that point in time so so anything mm. above that is just scratchy noises and and feedback and twang from this you know ringing from the string or or finger squeaks while you're moving your hand up and down the string but it may be your environment it may be the focus of your hearing mm. um it, and and it might have something to do with your speaker system even you know if you've got mm. uh, a certain, I, I use a pair of fluid coaxial monitors which i really love because the the tweeters are in line with with the 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 woofer and uh, i get them all at the same point you know the phase is always the same i found when i was doing some recording of the tops tap tones and things that where i placed the mic would would if I moved it up towards the horn too much or moved it down, that was very, very sensitive. So I bought these fluid things, which is an ex JBL guy, I think designed them. And you basically stick a mic in front of it and the, the woofer part comes out around the tweeter and all of it hits the microphone at the same time. And I found those to be absolutely gorgeous mm. tone wise. Yeah. I, I don't want to deviate too much. That was just one of my personal questions. And yeah, I, I do that too. I load up, you know, I load up in logic, the analyzers, and I, yeah. I I play into that, and that tells you where the peaks are, and that that is one of the peaks around two k. That is a peak right there, but yeah. my ear kind of latches onto it. I need I need to do more in investigations into that because I, yeah, some, yeah. I it, it's also the guitar. You know, some guitars I hear it way less, some guitars I hear it a lot. But um, let's talk a little bit about the magnetic pickup as well because this is really yeah. interesting. I bought when they first released the humbucker, the one behind me, right, was in my video. When they yeah. first released the Humbucker Angel a few years ago, I bought one and I returned it. And the reason I returned it is the B and the E were louder than the other strings. Yeah, yeah. And that that see, I, I'm very, I'm very, as you can probably tell, Paul, I'm very uh, analytical. The first thing I do when I get a new guitar is look for issues and problems, right? Talk, talking to a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a fellow. Well, that's why that's why I have a YouTube channel about this stuff. So a fellow believer, yeah. So I returned it, and then a few years, a couple of years later, I hear that there's now a balanced. And we're talking about the humbucker in the bridge, by the way. I'm going to show it on the screen in a second. But yeah. once, once, once I heard there was a balanced version, I was really excited. And I know this is your thing. So can you tell us like how that came about and how you solved that problem? Because I think this is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you exactly what happened there. We we when we first put a humbucker in, um. I fitted a set of nickel strings to the guitar and and I left it there over the weekend but I wasn't there on the Friday and by Monday they'd they'd put the phosphor bronze strings back on and I go no no you can't do that and they go why can't we do that it sounds all right and I go no the E and the B strings going to be too loud and I said the phosphor bronze itself is not magnetic so the only sound the only sound you're going to get from the magnetic is the core so if you looked at a set of strings without the phosphor bronze non-magnetic part on, which I actually strung a guitar up like that, it's almost like a Nashville tuning thing. You've got a, a on a standard set of 12 to 53s, you've got a 12 on the E and a 12 on the B, and they're quite taut, so they're quite loud. Then you've got about a 10,000 string 
for the G string because that's the core of the G. And then you've got about a, uh, it goes basically like a 10, 13, 17, 20 or something like that. And so they're really weak because they're also much lower in pitch. So they don't have the same velocity as the other two strings. Hmm. So anyway, they left the phosphor bronze strings on for about three or four weeks. And then Lloyd Spiegel took one out to a gig and came back and goes, you can't play this. <laughs> and I go, I told you so. <laughs> and, uh, and I said to Miles, maybe I could do something with the magnetic field to change the way I've been making pickups since the late seventies. And, um, the, the, um, I'd actually made a, uh, a vertical, you know, a inline, you'd call it a stack these days, a vertical humbucker for the Strat a long time before I'd ever seen one. I think we'd made one in about 1976 and Seymour Duncan patented one in about 1985. Mm. And yeah, parallel, he wouldn't have seen mine. I would have only made about a hundred of them. Um, anyway, so I had a, a fair bit of knowledge about pickups and being a sound man, of course, as a guitar player. And, you know, I helped a lot of guys with their sounds, building rack systems for them and tuning their amplifiers and all sorts of stuff. So I've got that background, if you like. And um, so I said to Miles, maybe I could um, I could mess with the pickup and make it different. And so I'm I was three years in last October to this project. Right. So I've made a thing we called the MagSim for magnetic symmetry. And basically, I learned a lot about magnets. I learned a lot that I don't know. And I think one of the crazy thing about learning about magnetic fields and the mathematics of it is at the bottom, there's always a disclaimer. And it always they say due to the variability of magnetic materials, um, you may not get these results. Well, that's what I've been fighting for a long time. But what we did learn was Basically, the MagSim is a computerized um, gadget that controls a big heavy duty power supply that feeds a set of six pairs of coils. So we have a little cartridge that fits in between each coil pair. And each one of the in that cartridge, there's a, a magnet for every coil pair. So if you like, we've got a long piece of um, polyethylene with six magnets that are placed about 30 mils apart. And then if you looked at the magnetic, if you looked at the, um, somebody wanted to be bothered, they could look up the pattern for it probably because we've got a patent on it. The, there's the six sets of coils. So you put one of those in and the first thing the computer does is it puts an AC field into the electromagnets and completely slates any magnetism that's in the magnets. Then we know they're all starting from the same point. Then um, we shoot them up and we bring them up to where we want them to be and i'm not sure what, how much of this is i mean they can read the technicians can probably read enough about it on the on the pattern description but basically it's the shape of the the energy field if you like that determines where the magnet is going to end up so there's the the one the limiting one is the g-string so we make the g-string as loud as we possibly can ah. and that just brings it up to about 70 or 80 percent of a standard humbucker we're, we're working on we're actually getting it higher than that but that's everything else has to be graded against that because that's the thinnest loosest string has the least amount of energy so we make the g-string magnet really really strong now of course the e and the b they're high tension and they're they're jumping around and they're really as you found out on your humbucker fitted acoustic um they're the weakest two and then we grade the D and the A and the E so that they all balance each other. So basically, we grade thousands of magnet sets. So they've got to be done as a set. And I didn't like the the um, humbuckers and that business. And, and what you found in those was exactly what I said to Miles. We can't put these standard pickups into a guitar. So then the, the, by basically the humbucker guitar started it all. And then we made a thin line angel with the humbucker in. And then we basically made the hybrid and the hybrid's got a FEA engineered top in it, which is a uh, finite engineering principles where the nodes are well known. And we, if you had a look at the insides, it's quite a complex pattern. If you talk to Miles, he might send you a picture of one or I could, um, but it's a very complex sort of pattern on the top that makes it vibrate correctly. The little teardrop, um, I thought we'd add because when we put the scratch plate on, it went really quiet. And I said, we really need a little player's port, as they call them, mm. so that uh, we can get a little bit of sound out of there. And then um, the rest of it probably is is little wiring configurations where we do a, 
uh, a parallel series on the bridge pickup. Um, and we do some different uh, wiring options. But it was basically, I think what why we called it a true hybrid was most companies um, have, have tried to approach who make electric guitars, have tried to make their electric guitars sound acoustic. And we've come along with an acoustic guitar from an acoustic guitar player's perspective who loves the feel of his neck, loves the tautness of a good set of fossil bronze strings and the way they sound acoustically. And then we thought, well, most of these guys are probably recording with an electric guitar as well. And uh, hey, why don't we add that facility to a guitar so you can have the hybrid sounds wonderful plugged in um, just with its the Cole Clark preamp system. And then, mm. you know, it, it shocked me on three fronts. The, the first time I'd wired up a scratch plate and I hadn't heard it yet. And, and Miles said, oh, how are we going with the, the wiring? And I said, I'll do it this morning. So I got quite a shock when I s sat in the middle of a PA and a magnetic guitar amp and went, oh, wow, how good's this? Because mm. so w it was a conception up till that point that, that you know, we didn't know we didn't know how it was going to go. And then I heard Lloyd downstairs one day and, uh, and I'd been, I'd, I'd do a little mentoring of the guys in the setup room a little bit. And one of the guys was refretting an SG and, and I'm, I'm a real SG fan and I'm listening away going, oh, they're having a bit of a jam in the setup room because I'm upstairs, my workshop's upstairs. And when Miles came up, he said to me, oh no, we had a video crew in here. That was Lloyd on the, um, on the hybrid. And uh, he just looped a backing track quickly a, a, a you know a, a backing rhythm track and i said mate that sounded like an sg to me upstairs so i was stoked on three fronts with that guitar so it's been quite a surprise to to all and sundry but it's basically a true hybrid because we've we've kept the the whole idea and sound and feel of an acoustic guitar and then we've just added the other stuff if it's your thing it's your thing and if it's not there's plenty of other guitars to go to you know I have one, and I have the one behind me as well. I, I kind of like the Angel with the humbucker because it's a bit more, dare I say, traditional. But then it's got yeah. that humbucker option as well. And so I like that one too. But just in case people are watching, because I've told people about the humbucker guitar, and some people, even the ones that are really into acoustic guitars, <laughs> I think they're still a little bit skeptical. So just so you know, you know, a lot of people stick a humbucker electric pickup in the acoustic guitar. And like we said, you get those issues with those two strings, the B and the E. Many companies, like I know, like LR Bags with their sand hole pickup, the way they deal with that is they remove the B and E pole pieces completely to drop yeah, that yeah. level to try yeah. and bring it down. But you're doing it with a machine at the factory, custom to the guitar, so you get a yeah. balanced sound. And yeah. um, but before we go to Q and A, actually, please think of some questions for, for Paul while he's here. And before we go to that Q and A, I'm going to play my video quickly again, just so people can see what I'm, what we're saying. But it's it's i can't believe no one's not done it before and it's you know it makes so much sense when you think about it because it is such a problem the, the other way around it is people will use electric guitar strings but then electric guitar strings on an acoustic guitar don't sound right with the acoustic pickup. so there is this kind of trade-off right because right now we're using yeah. acoustic strings with the electric pickup but the way you're balancing it at least everything now is balanced out and that's really really cool and that's why the hybrid we see on the screen is so cool because you've got three pickups on this model on the screen yeah. and they're all balanced and you can switch between them which is great i hope you've got one of our humbuckers now in your angel with the humbucker fitted have you got the, one of our new you i got, brought you yeah one of the cole clark magnets now magnet magnetic pickups oh i wouldn't have bought the other one i actually felt bad because a few years ago i knew miles and i returned that guitar i never told him because i kind of felt bad <laughs> about it but you know like we just said it, it's it, 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 it bugs me, you know, but it does. The new guitar does not bug me because it's balanced. Um, yeah. The the only the only thing I have actually while, while we're talking about this uh, subject, um, obviously when I switch between the, the ideal situation with these guitars is you run them into some kind of like um, digital modeler, and you use foot switches to switch between acoustic, electric, or both. I yeah. can't take that much stuff to my show, so I just take a TC Voice Live pedal for my acoustic and my voice. And a small amp sim like the uh, the new Line Six little tiny plastic pedal, light, you know, lightweight for the electric. But when I switch between them, obviously the electric, the acoustic pickup does pick up the sound of the switch into my looper. So I have to make sure I mute before I adjust that. You know, yeah, you know what course. I mean? Because because you've yeah, got yeah. obviously you've got metal on wood, and um, yeah. I, I don't know if there's, I don't know in the future if there's any way you could mitigate that. I guess that's a that's an analog thing, right? 
Well, yes, yeah, sort of. But the, the, the drama is, of course, that, you know, everybody wants more. You know, I know when the first processors came in and everybody thought, oh, this is fantastic. We have 10 different sounds all at our feet. And it's like, mm. oh, there's a fraction of a second delay before it switches or there's a little tiny mm. click or something like that. And hey, the, the, the early wow pedals used to be like a white noise generator. And we all live with mm. that. <laughs> you know, mm. I think we're getting too fussy as well. Well, I think the but best we do try and mitigate those things. I, th I think for anyone watching, the best way to run it is to run the two outputs into uh, a modeler with two inputs and do it all from the foot switches. So uh, switch yeah. one could be just acoustic, switch two. It's also better as well because you haven't got to do it with your hand. You, know, you just do it with your foot. Yeah, sure. So in, in the long run, I'm going to move to that setup because that's a lot easier to do that. Um, but yeah, I think it's really impressive. Can, are, you, are you allowed to tell us, like, I was wondering, like, who makes those pickups? Any spec like that you're allowed to share with us, or is that will Miles get upset? No, we make them. You make we them make yourself. Them. Up, I, I actually set up the department that. <laughs> I didn't know they, that. That's they've great. Taken over my workshop. <laughs> wow. So tell us about that then. Tell, tell us like so. Yeah, I'll, like, I'll, what, I'll tell what, you a little bit about. about yeah, please, that. please. And, uh, yeah. Maybe maybe we could send you some um, video of the room um, that you could use on one of your you know clips or whatever. I'm happy to come back for a for another dive if you want to in, into that. Yeah. But yeah. um. Basically, we realized that we can't let this out um, to anybody else to make it because it won't. It probably won't be right. So mm. we've um, we pretty well make everything. We we've got a little CNC coil winder. Um, we've got our own wax dip facilities. Um, yeah, we're a small scale. You know, uh, like a Seymour Duncan, Lola, whatever boutique, absolute boutique. Wow. Um, so we we have. We have total control. We we can change your windings. We can the violap. Have you ever seen a violap? It's a the steel. They had it. They had a NAM. Yep, yeah, had a NAM, NAM yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. The the um we had to make the pickup in that, and I, and I thought of the guys, you know, like from Rickenbacker in the maybe twenties or thirties, where you can't just ring somebody up and say, "Give me a bobbin." And the violap, the spacing between the two outside strings is fifty nine mil, and the big problem there is that. You can buy a humbucker for a Les Paul, which is 49 mil track from outside edge to, to outside string, if you like. Um, and and you can buy a, a, a Strat style humbucker that's 52 mil, but you can't buy 59 mil. So I physically, out of sheets of Bakelite, had to make the pickups and wind the pickups for the Violap. So they're made in house. We've also got a pretty mm -hmm. wide track on the 12 string. So we also use that pickup. It looks like an old worldly thing with quite a, a radius on the ends of the pickups, um, and and it's a it's a good looking pickup I think. It wasn't it was they used to make it on the CNC before I came along. Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's a, a really good, but it looks like a really old. The 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 instrument looks like an old worldly instrument, and we thought mm. it really needed a pickup that looked like that as well. And then um, we went on from that, of course, to because we've got pickup making facilities, I've been making pickups all my life. So it was no big deal for me. I had a, I got a coil winder that looks like it came out of the ark. <laughs> I bought it in <laughs> the seventies and I think it was made in the thirties. And like all the, the presses and things in the fender factory, it was made to be repaired indefinitely. So it's a gorgeous little machine, but the one we've got is probably about the size of a laptop. Um, and it's got a little CNC. It's got its own little programs in it. So it can wind a coil. We just pull up the right program. and It'll wind a coil to whatever we want. We do them on mass pretty well. We wax dip them. Uh, somebody else sits on a table and basically grades all the magnets into magnet sets. And there's there's little blocks of wood that have got six holes in each block. And well, they got 24 holes basically. So it can be two humbuckers or a humbucker and two single coils. And they're basically four sets of graded magnets. And then um, we got a little press and we press the, the magnets into the coils. But we've got another part of the patent we haven't, well, we've explored it, but we haven't released that part yet where we take a standard humbucker and we can do a similar thing to it. And uh, I'm not giving that one away just yet because mm. that's still to come. <laughs> but but that's another half of the patent. If somebody's really interested, they can read the patent on it. But um, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too much on that one. Mm. But that's still to come uh, for somebody that doesn't like the magnets inside. The the, the magnets in – I always like the, the – I, I remember having a, an SG and a friend of mine had a fender. And I couldn't get over the clarity that he got out of his single coil pickups. So I've always been interested in keeping a wide frequency uh, response. And so the the magnets, the 12 magnets that are in the, or the two sets of graded magnets that are in the humbucker, 
give you a nice upfront in your face sort of sound but we've also got a way to do it now with a standard humbucker where we can so if you if you see a standard humbucker from us with just a set of slugs the six slugs and the six screws that you normally see on a gibson style humbucker or whatever um our pickup will look exactly like that but it will have a lot of the magic from um the cold clark thing so we've been known as probably creating one of the best pickup systems in the world and and we can certainly take anybody on as far as magnetic pickups i've spent 40 to 50 years of my life working with i'm an electric guitar freak so magnetic pickups are my thing and in fact mm. it's not magnetic pickups it's the electric guitar and all that it's associated with you know the players the sound the the plectrums the technique the the whole bit <laughs> so i'm just in love with a whole lot what are your thoughts i play a lot of strat i love strats and i recently got the uh the sir with the with their dummy coil in it what are your thoughts yep. on dummy coils for single coil guitars they're, they're not a new thing you know a lot of this stuff that everybody's touting is new stuff i remember in the 70s seeing a a strat that somebody had modified it might have been chris kimman maybe even and um no he wouldn't have been that old um the the dummy coil basically and i've done it a lot it, it, it was a way of of nulling out the noise because you put a dummy coil in that's out of phase it doesn't contribute to the sound itself other than the inductance of that coil sucks the highs there's no real way around that it's gonna, really hmm. yeah yeah well demasio were pretty clever and their patterns run out now and i think seymour duncan may be using it i'm not sure but their idea was if you've I know because in the 70s, when I made a, a double stack first, in fact, I'll, t I'll tell you how it happened. Um, this, this, this is just, if you've got time, you got time for this? Well, the question is, have you got time? Because I'm, I'm good to I've go got time. No, longer. I've got okay, morning, great. Whatever. Yeah, okay. um, basically, what happened was I bought a coil winder. I'm very naive in those days. I was, you know, it was 1975, 1976. And, and I made a coil. I made a, I, I had a Japanese strat and I pulled the coil out of it and rewound it. And it sounded nice and hot with good mid range um, frequencies and things. And I thought this is really good and it might be a way of me staying alive because, you know, as I said before, I had a mortgage to pay and I was really nervous about um, doing, doing a, being, becoming a guitar repairer full time. And I thought, well, we need an extra source of income if I can do that. So the first guy comes along, has a listen to it and says, Oh, I like the sound of this. Can you wind me one? So I pull his pickup out and I take all the windings off and I rewind it and it sounded really dull. I thought, oh, maybe I've cooked it or something in the wax dip. So I made another one and another one. And in the end, I thought I better give him the one that's in the in the um, in in the demo guitar that I had there. And what I noticed was the magnets were sticking out of the bottom of the bobbin, which meant that the bobbin was a little closer to the strings. And I thought, no, nah, it can't be the can't have been that surely. So. I grabbed his pickup and I pressed pressed the the bottom plate up further and left the magnets hanging out. Rewound it and bingo! And I thought, hmm, this might be interesting. So I moved the lower plate into the middle of the magnets and I put another plate on because I wanted to hear what was going on in the bottom coil. And then I discovered that I just made a humbucker. I just sort of worked it out that hey, this is going to be good. So I've I've always been the 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 physical nature of the 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 bobbin and you know, you'll find P90s and Jazz Masters are really live because most of the copper wire is in the field of the magnetized string. And so, the, you know, the further away that gets, like a, a tele style pickup where they're long and thin, tends to lose brights unless they're wound correctly and use the right magnets and stuff like that. There's, there's ways you can get over some of this stuff. But um, so I've always had an interest in, in the way that works. Now, um, Dimasio came out with a revolutionary idea in, I don't know, maybe the 90s, and the, the virtual vintage pickups. And they, their idea was the bottom coil, because of the extra coil wire and the inductance, inductance is just the more, the more turns of wire you put on a pickup, the more inductive it gets. And inductance is, is basically uh, going to allow low frequencies to go through and going to try and stop a lot of the high frequencies just by the nature of how inductance works. I won't get into the details of that. But um, so they thought, well, what we'll do is we'll wind a coil that's only 20% of the size of the top coil. And so it doesn't become too inductive and doesn't um, kill the high frequencies. But what we'll do is we'll put an extra bunch of slugs in the bottom to attract the noise. So there's about 13 slugs in the bottom. 
that um, there's one in between the, the six and one on out, the outside of each. And metal attracts noise as well. So they, they've done it. They did it just right so that it would attract the right amount of noise and null the, null the noise. So your little, um, your little uh, coil, that, that, um, the dummy coil thing, it's basically just another noise pickup. It should be in, roughly in the same plane as the, the pickup it's trying to null the noise of, and they just wind in enough. And the other thing they use is a noise antenna, which is basically a little coil of wire on the back plate of a Strat. And um, it picks up the body noise and they feed it back out of phase to null the noise in the in the mm -hmm. single coil. So they're three techniques basically of, of humbucking pickups. There's several, quite a few of them. I saw a great so guitar at NAMM. No, it's good. So that's why we're here. Um, if anyone complains about this being too technical, they're in the they're in the wrong live stream. You're in the wrong, yeah, wrong place. <laughs> you're in the wrong room. They had a great oh, yeah. guitar at Nam. I never seen before. They had um, a Thomas Blue Strat, and it had a push push on it, and that enabled yeah. or disabled the dummy coil. I thought that was yeah. awesome, and that yeah. would show you the difference in the tone, wouldn't it? If you want to yeah. mess with that. Oh, absolutely. The the brights will come up, mind you. You can mitigate that to a degree, and if they were really smart, I'd be looking at um, using some sort of treble bypass. When the, when the, um, mm. I think the 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 greatest thing for me being a, a guitar repairer is electronics. I used to say electronics was my thing when I started, but actually, I realised that if I wanted to to mess with the sound of an electric guitar, I had to do the electronics as well as the, as well as the wood stuff, and mm. um, but. But um, there are mitigating ways of, of getting around that where you'd say, well, when we switch in the dummy coil um, and we lose highs, maybe we'll just put a little, um, a little filter in, a little passive filter that'll mitigate that to a degree. Mm. But um, I don't know. I haven't seen the guitar. So um, there's, there's, every, everybody's, got a, everybody's got an angle, which is good because you know, it, it gives everybody options to, um, to try different things. So did you, when you were developing the hype, the true hybrid, did you ever consider putting that in there or no, or just not? Um, no, not, well, the, 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 um, the, the problem always is in, you know, I spent, I, I wrote all the software for my business and you get used to the point a bit like you may be writing an album and you think, when are you prepared to let it go? You think oh, I can just polish this up and I can just mm. mix that and I'm just going to add that. Sooner or later, you have to let it out. You know, yeah. they they won't keep paying me unless they start to make some money out of my my effort. So the hybrid is very much um, in in its early phases, and mm. it's a great as it is. It's a really great instrument, I I believe. Um, you know, Andy, our um, R and D guy on the CNC who does all the design and stuff has done a magnificent job of building the instrument, and my contribution basically was the electronic part of that. And, um, and, and, you know, we, we all sit around the table and everybody throws in a few ideas and things, and I'm probably a little louder than most people at the meetings, but, um, cause I, I'm, I'm bringing it back to more towards the electric thing and they're taking it out to the acoustic thing. So hmm. the marriage of that, um, can be a little rocky sometimes, but, um, it's true healthy debate makes better instruments. So we're in the early hmm. phases of that and we, we basically, didn't understand the demand for the hybrid it went berserk and which meant that all of our resources were hey let's just make this thing and let's just make some pickups and get them out there and in between that we are working on we've we've already modified the coils we've already modified the magnets and we've the curves and stuff like that so we're we are working towards some somebody in japan said oh your guitars are a bit noisy in the les paul and i said well the problem with that is of course that if you look at the signal to noise ratio our pickups can only ever be as strong as the magnet on the G-string, G -string, which yeah. is cool. only going to give us the output of about 60 or 70% of a Les Paul. But that's mm. not the end of the matter, though, because we're working towards refining the coil structure, refining the whole. It's just a different, if you pull apart one of our pickups, you'll see it's quite different to the way other pickups are made. There's a little circuit board that the two bobbins sit on, for instance. And uh, we're messing even even the metal that the... the um, the base plate and the and the cover is made out of is important because of eddy currents and this that, and the other. Um, so I'm trying to keep the jargon out of it if I can. Um, I'm reasonably advanced on a electronic front, but it's a matter of putting into layman's 
terms that mm. that um i we have to sell this to to players you know but yeah. the hybrid yeah. is in its early stages and even even now you'll see um different woods being used on it you'll see lots of little different things happening with it um and and my goal probably is uh we've just that just this week i've been given some more staff in the uh, magnetic pickup building things because um we need to sideline some resources for for um, R and D, and I'm still working on the code for the uh, MagSim. It's a it's a complex thing, you know. It's got a little processor on board, and it's um, it's t about timing. It's about the the switching of of energy pulses and where to turn it on, where to turn it off, and all sorts of stuff. And I'm still the the um the prototype the first prototype i made was the third prototype i made is actually the production one at the moment but i've made four since and and i'm hopefully finalizing i don't know whether um i could i don't know whether i should if you like i can only get yeah show, show us um, show us something <laughs> i i won't be able to see this on the other side so um well maybe i'll try and look as well oh cool um, see that yeah basically that's um that's my little prototypes that are um mm. i'm just developing the uh, pcb for it and uh their little um oh, sorry i not i can't hold this and if i turn turn them on you'll see you'll see them um running here yeah, can you see that i'm going full screen for you yeah, yeah, but yeah wow wow <laughs> yeah so, i know what i know what all that is <laughs> yeah, yeah. so <laughs> 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 so I don't, as i said i don't know whether i should have shown you that but it's um that's that's my little uh my little test bed for, for there's there's um the processor is so small it's five millimeters i had to put it get it put on a special little board so i could actually i could actually tap into it but anyway i'm working on that and um i work hand in hand so i spend a few days in the at at home or whatever out of the way and then when i um when i'm in my workshop oh. over there i sideline a bit of the resources so that i sit i sit along a computer and the guy doing the magnets or something can try out some different curves and things that i'm throwing at him and then we've got lots of equipment we've got we've got um spectrum analyzers and we've got um magnetometers which they call gauss meters and measuring milli teslas for some unknown reason wow <laughs> You know, so so the thing with the thing is, I I said this to Miles. So Miles Jackson is the CEO of uh, Cole Clark, and I said the same Absolutely. thing to him at the. I was at Nam with with uh, talking to him a lot, and I said the same thing. What I love about Cole Clark the most is you're continually tweaking and improving things, but not not like some companies, not just to sell something or for the sake of it, to actually genuinely improve the product. And oh, I I really I. I really yeah. believe that. The only frustrating side of that for me is that I always want to get the like, like with the guitar that I I now have this version. I always want like the newest version because you you've tweaked it a little bit. So I just get a new guitar. <laughs> well, it's probably you've got a great mouthpiece on your um, YouTube channel, and uh, you might be the the first guy to get this stuff waved at. You know, because <laughs> if we want it out there, we need people that um, publicize it, and so you'll probably be kept up to date, I would say. <laughs> I have been, and that's why I do these things, because I like to know this stuff. I didn't know about the G string having to be the hardest string and the other strings in real life. Find, I find that stuff really interesting, all the backstory yeah, yeah. and the, te the technical side. Of course, yeah. you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a performer. Right? I, play, I play gigs, and what, all that really matters to me is the sound that comes out. And you know, a, lot of us, a lot of people say, it doesn't matter, the audience doesn't care, but the amount of people that don't play the guitar that have said to me, that guitar sounds great is i mean okay it's not thousands but it's way more than, than you would think right it's 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 no it's noticeable and to me that's really important and i like the guitars as well i really do i've got um, an angle i've got an angle on that yeah. factor the yeah. you, you say the audience doesn't know like if you were watching me throw a dart into a dartboard and i got the bullseye you would say oh great shot and i go no i was aiming for the triple 20 at the top mm. And so it was a bad shot. So if I pick a guitar up and it's really hard to play, I'll get through it and everybody will watch it and go, yeah, it sounds the same as the other guitar. But I'll go, no, it affected my performance. And so mm. if your player is the only person that notices a difference in sound, maybe he's going to play a little better or a little worse, depending on whether it's a good or bad thing. And so that's what the audience will notice. 
why wasn't there a great performance out of this band tonight? Or why was there, why was there a great performance? And it might just come back to the fact that the guy playing the guitar was just having such a great time that he just, Hey, went out there and got on the edge. Well, it's also the feel because I, I've, I've seen friends of mine recently that played just an under saddle in their guitar and it sounded fine to me. It sounded great to me. Right. Yeah. But when I'm playing, like even last night, I finished with a big, you know, rock and roll kind of ending at the end of the night. And just that feel of the, of the sound, even with the in is just that feel of the guitar. And it's like, it's alive, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's, 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 it's a, it's, it's like the tube amp versus the modeler thing. The modelers are amazing, but the tube amp, when you crank yeah. it up, gives you that feeling that nothing else can because and of it the, made you play better. What it, is. it makes you play better. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what of the course. audience notices. So what I'd like to do now, Paul, is um, I'd like to go to the chat and see if they've got questions. I'll, I'll go through their comments and so we'll say hi. And if they've got questions for you, I'll present them to you now. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. But before I do that, one more time, I'm going to play the video that I played at the start of the show. And what I did was before we went live, I just recorded with my phone um, directly the guitar. What you're hearing is the guitar direct. There's no microphones or anything. And, and just because um, at the start of the show, anyone that's not familiar with Cole Clark won't know what they were listening to. So what you're hearing is the acoustic pickup direct, the magnetic pickup direct, the blend of the two, because you can blend them both together, which is one of my favorite things to do. You get that big, really big, larger than life sound. And then at the end, I just pick through the strings so you can hear that they're evenly balanced. So I'm going to play that. And then please, if you're watching, if you've got a question, now is the time to ask, because once we've gone through all the questions, we're going to wrap things up. So I'll play the video now when we come back about one minute and I'll go through your, your comments. All right. So here we go. All right, there we go. So that was that was recorded direct. So that's what I'm talking about. If you if you're at home, listen with headphones because that's the sound that I normally hear because I normally use. I don't know what happened. It was, it was a lockdown. I started doing live stream gigs and I started wearing in ears, Paul, and I got so used to it. I yeah. used to hate. I used to hate the idea of in ears. I used to hate them, but I used them for so long because the lockdown was so long that um, I got used to it. And then when I went back to the restaurants, a lot of venues now want you to go into the house system and be around the whole venue. So yeah. I, I can't really hear myself. So I wear in-ears. And aside from the fact I can't really hear people, like last night someone requested the song, I couldn't hear them because I had the in-ears in. Aside from that, I, I actually really like it now. I like being in the sound like I am now, like having that enclosed, yeah, sure. like right in the sound. And also you don't hear the people talking and stuff like that if, if it's not the ideal audience. Better you know? your voice you, too, I think. Right, yeah. a lot better. Yeah, I get, I yeah, get less yeah. tired. Yeah, and, and yeah, you really you can nuance your voice a lot better as well. Yeah, and like you really notice, like if you do something like Everlong, where he's singing down the octave from the band version, and it's quite yeah, yeah. low, it's it carries fine with the in ears. But once you take the in ears out, it's like the voice doesn't have the energy. You start to push harder because you feel like yeah, there's yeah. no power there, but there is, and, you, and that's how you I'm, blow your voice out. Yeah, I play in a three piece band, so I'm well aware of the on the vocalist as well. So. It's um, it's much better. You get your voice. You keep your voice at the end of the night as well. I I think it's interesting. I think more and more people are moving to in ears, and um, yeah. I just my my advice if anyone's considering it is you need to get used to it. It's like a new experience. You just have to stick yeah. with it for a while because it is. I get some good ones. I get some good quality ones. All right, let's go through the chat and say, let's be social. Say hi to our viewers. 
So first person here was Patsy Smith. Good evening. This was a while ago. Andrew said, good morning. <laughs> Rosanna said, good evening. So they're in England. Um, Rosanna was moderating, but I think her and Lee, our moderators, have had to go to bed because it's now like after midnight in England. Um, and Bernard Smith as well. And Andrew said, Tamworth, New South, New South Wales. Act this is a cool, cool comment, Paul. He's actually thinking about picking up a true hybrid this afternoon. This afternoon. Where How about that? <laughs> yeah, Tamworth's the country music capital of Australia. I do wish. I do. I, I really want to come out there soon, sooner than later. And I always get jealous because the stores out there have so many Australian guitars. And I'm in America. And it's, it's a lot better now than it was. There's, there's some really good selections now I've, I've seen on, on uh, I've been looking online lately. But there's nowhere near still as many, obviously, as you have out there. And you have yeah, the yeah. factory there as well, and you can go there and do that. Are you doing the tours again? Yeah, yeah. We always yeah, do wow. the tours. Very cool. Okay, so Andrew, if you do, let us know. That's really cool. Uh, Boomer gave a thumbs up, and Madfrit Manchester said hi from the UK. I wonder if he's still awake. That's Graham. Yeah. And I think he recently got one of the Baton Rouge guitars where you've got the aftermarket system installed. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Looking forward to see what happens all, with all that. Yeah, I'm working on a new project for them as well. So part of the OEM line. Mm. Uh, oh, Boomer's in in uh, Canada. Cool. Uh, Lee said hello. Good to see you, Lee. When you're watching the replay, I know you went to bed. Uh, Sam, I know Sam recently got a Cole Clark. And he says, bravo on the latest pickup. It's absolutely divine. Some praise there from Sam. Thank you, Sam. Um, Boomer said I'm a bit hot. He was talking. I realized he was talking about the audio, not not me uh, physically. <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't have to. I did. I did have to think <laughs> twice. You're a bit hot. You never know. I always said thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Grant said uh, good day from uh, Victoria, right? B I C. Yeah, Sam's my um, my co buddy at at. Uh, he's making pickups. Ah, oh. I'm think that's the same Sam. I don't know whether he's still on, but. Um, in victoria I can't quite see but he's the only would sam you, i know the sam would band he, i know he works would, with me yeah he's, would, would he would he be in victoria yeah absolutely he'd be in, in um the factory that's i'm oh, pretty sure that's the same sam. okay that shows my i have I like, i've never been otherwise? tell him never been to us never been to us never been to australia so my geography is not good <laughs> yeah yeah well we're in uh, victoria so um oh you are in victoria were, okay we're about 20 odd miles out or in your uh, parlance from um, right. east of Melbourne. Right. Okay. I'm definitely going to come out this uh, sooner than later. Um, Gary says greetings from Tucson, Arizona. Very cool. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Lee, had, Lee and Rosanna had to go to bed. They're going to watch the replay tomorrow. I know it's just, it's so, I've had um, um, like we had miles on in the lockdown and there's like, Finding a time that works is impossible yeah, when sure. you do a live stream for everyone, right? Um, but this will be up to watch in the future, so it's no problem. Um, Chris Woodall, I love the true hybrid guitar. I just have to save up for one. Well, okay. <laughs> um, Boomer said, ask about the wax used in the pickups. Any specific wax or generic? Um, do you use beeswax? Look, the beeswax is slightly harder than the paraffin wax, and I know a lot of people use 20% of one and 20% of the other. I've never particularly liked the smell of beeswax, and so pretty well um, the paraffin wax we make is probably the same stuff they put in jams and things. There's no secret. It's just hmm. it's basically to stop the coils moving about, and uh, if the, the wax, obviously, you don't want it running out of the guitar in a warm summer or something, so it needs to be still capable of being hard on a hot day especially in in the weather we've had here recently in 40 degree heat so the beeswax is often used i think just for hardness but i don't think it's necessary i was thinking the other day because this is all quite new to me but i was thinking like over time is there any chance that pickup will change or is it like locked no. in for life now the way i look at it you know you you um when you make a pickup you 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 wax dip it to stabilize the the. Are you talking about the wax? Or are you talking about the magnets or the structure the, the, of the pickup? Yeah, the, the fact the fact that you've um, basically remagnetized it to be balanced. Is there any way that will change well, over time? 
Not really. I mean, we've got 50-year-old um, Stratocasters and things that come in here and their mm. magnets are still fairly strong. They do, you know, over a 50-year period, you can expect the magnets to mellow a little bit. Um, it's no big deal for us. We can just bang them in the machine and do them again. Mm. But um, you can expect it to, like, the, when they first probably magnetise the Alnico 5s in the L-series strats, um, you'd you'd probably find that they would have been a bit more Tex-Mex or a bit more, you know, in your face. And, and gradually over a period of time, they've mellowed, which is another angle on the MagSim is we could actually make a vintage pickup now and mellow the magnets to where a 50-year-old Strat would be and make them really sweet. And that's that's something that's escaped. I know I've tested lots of vintage pickups from other people and they their flat work is just really great and they use the right coil wire and everything looks really spot on. But the magnets sometimes are really hot. Mm. And uh, we can actually make a pickup that's that's um, matches. If you brought in an L-series Strat, I'll match the pickup, no problems with the MagSim because I'll just measure them and we'll make a set of magnets to suit. And so um, that's another another good thing we can do with the with the uh, machine. Mm. Um, okay, that was for Boomer. And then Sam Grant says, "Oh, there's it. so this is Sam Grant again about the humbuckers. Oh, I guess it's not the same one because he says about the, the humbuckers. One, right? <laughs> I guess not about the about the humbuckers. They seem to be." made with magnets not soft iron slugs and a bar magnet is that because of the balance magnets and does that change the sound of the humbucker uh yes and yes hmm. um, i mean any, anything has to affect right? magnets and and i think we can control you know the the great thing about a a single coil pickup is the fact usually the single coils that like we're talking about a stratocaster or a telecaster here the fact of having an individual magnet magnetic field for every string does count to, to to give you a set the six strings blend a lot nicer because of that and when you when you take a single coil like in one of the mexican early mexican strats where they've got a bar magnet underneath the magnetic field gets really messy and so the pickup dulls because of that now you might like that sound it might be warm if you like but i mm. like the distinct every string to, to jump out so yeah having a, a humbucker with 12 magnets in it is always going to sound more direct and sweeter to me anyway andrew says other than the types of wood what are the variations between the models of the true hybrid models i'm looking at getting a tl2 ec bl bl hss blk let's mm. break down that model name uh, Thin line. With, well the, the tl uh, the tl2 ec just electric cutaway but the mm. blackwood blackwood bl bl is blackwood blackwood and it's humbucker and two single coils it looks like it's black right so that's but that's a true hybrid the true hybrid is yeah. called a thin the tl is thin line right yeah 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 okay cool all right so um variations i you know i've got a, just so you know andrew i've got a booth rundown that i shot at nam with miles the ceo and we go through the different guitars because he was he was saying that there's all the different pickup configurations you can get um, and obviously, yeah, like, or, I, well, I guess you know what you want to get. You want to get the BLBL HSS um, black version. So there you go. Yeah. Um, but there, check out that video as well before you go um, shopping, because we, we do go through some of that stuff as well. But what was his question? What are the variations between the models? Well, mainly the types of the types of wood are going to give you the most variations. You've only got the three. The the SSS is the three single coils, two humbuckers, humbuck, humbuck and the hss which i would choose the hss myself because i like the the neck and middle sounds um to be single coil and i i, I like a bit of grunt in the bridge pickup so but, I, I would go for the humbucker in the bridge but the interesting thing that i was talking to miles about at nam is that he said like the hh version still has the single coil kind of sound as well right it's not just yeah, yeah, it's not like parallel. A, we got a yeah. parallel humbuck switch and whatever on it. Yeah. So bear that if you look at these guitars, bear that in mind as well. If you come from the approach of like the electric guitar world, there's actually some um, differences in there as well um, with, with the with the pickups, the way they're wired and the way that they work and the, uh, like yeah. that. So bear that in mind as well and do check that out. I, ca I can't remember everything he told me, but it's really cool because he was saying it's good to have the two humbuckers because if you strum, sometimes people don't want that pickup in between the two pickups in the middle, mid the middle pickup. 
Um, yep. But you can still get the single coil kind of sounds from that guitar. So it's worth checking. He also told me that if you've got a guitar, you can fit a different pickup with the uh, the the, the um, scratch plate with the pickups. So I could turn yep. my HSS guitar into an HH if I wanted to. Is that right? If you could, absolutely. Yeah, so that's they're cool. All, they're all they're all made to take the cutouts a bit like the Strat again. They're they're all made with with the uh, front and and rear. Um, humbuck cut out and a single coil in the middle so you could just mm. take another scratch plate and put it on quite readily okay and we're, we're working towards that too as soon as i have a bit more time um i will d design a a little circuit board for the true hybrid so that we have plugs on the on the pickups so it'll be quite an easy matter for somebody to undo the two screws uh, and just awesome. plug another pickup in but we, it's just yeah. time again the, the the hybrid we're flat out trying to make them to satisfy the demand yeah i love that idea because i'm i've, I've thought about changing pickups to my electric guitars before and you've got a solder so if yeah. you could just if you could just take a plate off and put the other one on and clip the clip together that would be awesome Absolutely. That'd be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and then you'll <clears> sell more <throat> scratch plates because people can buy all three of them right and choose and interchange Absolutely down the track yeah oh that's good information very cool all right. He also said, I've already got an FL3, which is the Dreadnought in the three series, and an AN2, which is the medium size, the Angel 2, yep. and adore them both, but they, as they are so different, I'm thinking the addition of a true hybrid will complement my sound. Well, Andrew, you're just trying to justify going out to buy a guitar this afternoon, <laughs> and we you know, we applaud that. That's, that's why we're here. That's why we're making videos about, about guitars. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you have our blessing. <laughs> But yeah, I think so. Yeah, you've got to have the dreadnought, you're going to have the angel, and you're going to have the hy the hybrid with the multiple pickups. So yeah, they're they're going to be three very cool. Just, just cutting in here, like his FL three, obviously series three is not something you want to take on the road, and mm. so you're stuck with the AN two probably. Not that that's being stuck with, but the hybrid is one of those things you could, if you're going to a gig or whatever, you throw it in a gig bag and take it with you. And it's like, do I need to be an electric player tonight? Do I need to be a, an acoustic player? What do I need? It's compact. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of good reasons to buy one. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I have an Angel 3 that I was gigging until I got the humbucker guitar behind me at NAMM. <clears throat> and then I have the hybrid, but I haven't gigged that. I don't know. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think eventually I will once I've gigged this one a lot. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the other way around. Like I said earlier, I like the idea of like a, just a regular guitar, like the one behind me the, you know, with a bigger body. But it's got the humbucker like stealthy in there as well. I think that's kind of a. I've always, there, there was a band called Weedus in the '90s, and they played um, Teenage Dirtbag, and he had like an acoustic yep. with a humbucker stuck in it. And I always yeah. liked that that vision, like playing a gig. So you've got a regular guitar, but you're stuck a, a humbucker in it. I, th I always like that. So that's why that's, that's why the humbucker like near the bridge because um, we're really getting a nice mellow sound, and most people stick a magnetic pickup in the sound hole. And it's not the right mm. place. If you want to fang away, you've really got a great tone coming from your normal piezo system. And if you want to fang away on a bit of um, ZZ Top or something, yeah, you, mm. want, you want one in the right position. So we made sure it's in pretty well the same position as it would be in a Les Paul or something like that r related to the scale length. Yeah, funny thing is, the early hybrids I ever played had it in the neck and i didn't like that i wanted it in the bridge but now i've been gigging this one i often find myself wanting to go to the neck so that's why i'll probably end up long term going to the hybrid because then you've got all the pickups in there yeah yeah in the guitar so there you go but yeah i mean it's great that you make all these different versions of the guitars because you can choose which one is right for you which i like too um so andrew do let us know if you end up picking one up that's awesome uh kevin says can you elaborate on the filter contour button so that's the fc switch on the acoustic preamp what what it does going from the previous sound to the new sound so it's in and out right so you can go back to the original version oh you're muted i lost you yeah yeah well the thing that you're, oh, you're back nice you're back you're back oh, sorry. you're good you're there? no you're good you're yeah. good go ahead the, the fc button um they uh, lloyd called it the flux capacitor but um it's a frequency contour um so when the when the filter is in it's not actually a notch it's about an octave wide and about 9 db deep at a, at centered around about 3.2 to 3.4 k depending on the particular capacitor that's in the unit itself and uh when you just switch that out which is what i wanted to do the sound is quite bland so basically then we put in a presence contour which probably 
like uh, an SM58 microphone probably pushes the the sibilance in a voice it'd be the sibilance in an in a electric guitar it's the breath if you like all the the finger squeak noises that are made and and so it's it's the filter defeat and then the a little expander is what I sort of called it it just pushes up those extra frequencies to make you pop out a little bit I hope that's enough of an explanation without getting too complicated Yes, my, I always say it's basically the old version, the new version. And when I first got that new version, I actually stuck with the older version for a while. But then, once I, I you know, again, you get used to stuff, don't you? And I'd also done some yeah, EQing course. for that as well. And once I put the EQ flat and then went back to new to the new version, now I never use <clears> the old version. Uh, uh, eventually, have you got any thought about removing that button completely from the system? Or are you gonna do you have some players that use it? The big problem was we, we'd only just started selling guitars in the States. And what we didn't want is, you know, their first order, Korg were doing the distribution originally, and we're, we're, we're doing it ourselves now. But mm. they ordered like 700 guitars. What we didn't want is them to get these guitars and go, hey, these sound really different. Mm. <laughs> so the idea was ah. to, to give an additive thing rather than, than, and if somebody likes the old sound still, and whatever it's, whether it suits their electronic equipment or whatever, um, they can still fetch it. So, uh, no, we haven't thought about removing it yet. Yeah, I understand that's why you put it on there, but I'm just thinking, like, in, in two years from now, if everyone says, oh, we don't use that, we just use the new voicing, would it benefit you in any way to remove it? Would it save you money or, or a, not? Well, I think it's a bit like Fender. When Fender tried to bring out an lead Strat, everybody was going, no, we want the same guitar that Jimi mm. Hendrix used or Buddy Holly or somebody, you know, or Stevie Ray Vaughan. And you're damned if you change something sometimes yeah. and damned if you don't. What we yeah. can do is in new models, we're not stuck by tradition. And Cole Clark largely is not a traditional builder like Martin or somebody that has to, you know, everybody wants a D28 or, you know, a little triple O or something like that. And so they've got to keep making those guitars. And Miles likes to, um, to chop it up a little bit, which is really good because, um, you know, hey, we'll try some different woods. We get a different tree. We do a lot of tree reclamation and uh, a tree will go down somewhere. And if, if the right people's in the right spot, they ring us up and say, hey, we've got a Californian redwood here. <laughs> and so yeah. we go and get it. And um, so European maples were kicked out of a, 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 a suburb or a, a, a sort of a county in, in your terminology over there, um, close to, to us. And so... Um, it looked really great because um, it was spalted, which is um, a term for when the fungus gets into the grain and makes the grain really pop out. And then when we got some um, some some um, European maples that didn't have the spalting in, we had to learn how to do the fungus thing. <laughs> they had those at Nam, and they were a hit. <clears throat> I I, almost, yeah, I, yeah. I I really liked it too. They looked awesome. There was an angel. I think there was an angel and a hybrid. Yeah, I'm just trying, I'm trying to find it on my computer, but um, they looked really, really cool. But that's one thing with Cole Clarks as well. They all look so different that it's, um, you know, I, I like to look oh, at the pictures all the time. you could go the setup room and you'd say, well, I want a Blackwood on Blackwood. And you'd see the first one, you go, yeah, I want this one. And then you'd see one alongside and went, oh, hang on. I think this one's better. And yeah. then you'd have a, they're all uniquely different. Yeah, which is good. And, you know, that's why I like to see the, the photographs <clears throat> of them. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I can't find that picture, but it's um that that was a really cool wood. But you know, that's the, I was going to ask you about that as well. I've, I ask all the guitar companies. Like, obviously, wood is in short supply. Martin are now making guitars from sustainable yeah. woods. That actually reminds me a lot of Cole Clark. You know, um, we always have. So you have to, right? You have to look for what's available because you can't you can't always get the same stuff. Um, so you have yeah. to get what's available, and that's what you're doing. So and that's why they're so unique, for sure. They're sort of um, on the back foot a little bit now with your, your Martins and Taylors and things because they've got to learn how to – every bit of wood has to be handled differently, like when you're bending sides and, and and bracing and things like that to get the best out of the sound of the timber. Sometimes you have to modify the bracing. And um, we've always been working with sustainable timbers, so we're used to working with blackwoods and, and maples and Queensland maple and and some of the, the Australian woods. And, and, of course, it gives people over there – in America, particularly, um, a, a different voice from your traditional, you know, spruce and rosewood and spruce and mahogany and whatever. 
Yeah, one thing though, one thing I always read on for I know <laughs> forums are dangerous places, but a lot of people say um, cold clocks, and they also say about the matins as well. They always say, "Oh, they don't sound loud acoustic. They don't sound good and loud acoustically." <laughs> That's just not true. I, I don't like when people put throw everything into one um, thing yeah. like that because there's so many different models of these guitars and woods that you're yeah. using. You got to play them. I, I know availability yeah. can be a, a problem, like when you're not in Australia. And actually, mm. um, Mad for at Manchester just brought that up and said that wish they're hard to find in the UK. But I just want to let you know that they are at Guitar Guitar now. I'm going to show you the website on here. This is this is um they have a lot here, so check this out. Um, see they've got in stock, in stock. They've got an Angel Three. They've got a lot yep. of guitars there actually. So you need to check this store out because it's showing in stock for all these. I think some of these might be from them, but there's a, there's a there's a bunch of them, and then there's a lot that are available to order as well. So definitely check out Guitar Guitar if you're in the UK. And I have no affiliation with them. I just know they've got some guitars there. So yep. uh, check that out for sure. They've got the the new the new ones as well. The um the Jewel National ones. They've got those two. Oh, they're pre order, but still, um, they have some. So check that out, Guitar Guitar. But no, I have to say, like I said, I really I look on the Australian stores and they have walls of cold clocks. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to be in that store. I want to play them. Like Nam yeah, was yeah. amazing to have that many guitars in one place when you're in America. That was amazing to see that as well. Uh, okay, just keep just going. On that front about the, being loud. Um, the yeah. your big drummer in in I think Cole Clark have always done really well because they make a, an acoustic guitar for performers, hmm. and so if you make it to this this course that I did with Trevor Gore, he basically Trevor said that a lot of um, manufactured guitars are lemons. What he meant was they haven't reached their full potential. And I said, look, I said because we we have to make a guitar for the road doesn't mean to say we're not interested in the sound of them and the volume from the acoustic sound. But there's got to be a compromise because in the early days, people used to stuff cotton cotton wadding into guitars to try and shut them up a little bit so they really? can take off on stage. Wow. And and uh, so never heard that. the guitar has to be a little stiff. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare on stage. So, but we that doesn't mean to say we're not trying to make them louder, and we certainly are. And there's there's a new range just coming out now, the Studio Series. Hmm. And they will be that. much, much different. They're much louder. Yeah. But I just think... It's, I don't agree with it. I, I know why people think that because you play some guitars and they're they're like stiffer and quieter. And I also think people need to be aware of that too. Like the old vintage Martins have those extra thin tops and the whole thing moves and you feel it moving yeah. and it's loud. And that's great. But that like, like you said, when you stick a, a pickup in there, it's going to have more problems with feedback than a stiffer top guitar. But I don't think I just don't agree with it. I've played other brands that I do think are, are pretty um, quiet and and um, tight yeah. sounding. I don't. I've got an angel. I've got an angel three. I I I think it's you know. I don't. I don't. I don't think that way. Maybe I've been. I've also been playing them for a while now. Maybe I've adjusted. Yeah. But I've still got my mm -hmm. Martins here, and I mean I'm not. I don't think they're particularly. I don't know. And also, I just think people need to be careful because guitars change over the years. Like you change the way you build them. Yeah. Guitars are made with different woods and things, and you hear stories of like years ago, maybe Takamini guitars were very much like that, and then you hear stories now of their change. They also make lots of different models, don't they, with different specs? So I just think absolutely. I just don't like reading that because I don't think it's necessarily true. And um, to say and that wood, all the wood dries out over time too, and the 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 mm. guitars, you know, what we tried to do with the X brace in the guitar, we're trying to a good a good um, fifteen year old Cole Clark. Would, would start to be coming into its own and it'd be nice and loud and whatever. And I think when we're making them now, they sound as loud as the 15-year-old. So we're, we're always... Right, I agree, with, yeah. ...with things yeah. To, to try and make them. So they come out of the factory now sounding like they're already 15 years old. Yeah, I just think... I'm not I'm not trying to, like, um, make excuses or, or be overly... Um, I overly praise the Cole Clark. I just think when sometimes you read statements online that are so like blanket statement, I feel the same way with carbon fiber guitars. I've played some carbon fiber guitars that sound big and loud and resonant. And I've played some that sound tight and small. And I yeah. just, you, you can't just, you can't just say brush, you know, 
you can't blanket yeah yeah blanket blanket statement this stuff that's all tell yeah. us quick, quickly i did i did hear about the studio series at nam are they shipping now are they done yes so what can you to do first can you tell though, us but yeah well, please i'll tell you a little bit about i don't know um how much i'm supposed to tell you here but basically what's happened already is we wanted a guitar um we wanted a guitar that people could afford and it's very difficult to make money on your one series guitars, you know, because you're putting in almost the same amount of effort. So a lot of people will probably came Cole Clark for this, but we've had a batch of guitars made in China, but basically we send the wood over to China. They build the guitar, they send it back. We do all the electronics and, and the plec to the fret dressing. So they're brought up to the same standard and uh, they've got the new bracing pattern on board and it, and it, it's going to put a, it's going to put a, over here, instead of two and a half thousand dollars or something for for a guitar, you're going to be able to get one for about fifteen hundred dollars. So we're trying to make it more accessible for a lot of people. But for the purists, we're making the Model Twos and Threes of that series, the Studio series. They'll be the Studio Pros, and uh, the Chinese um, ones have already shipped. I think the first batch uh, came through and have gone out, and there's another batch due fairly soon. I think. And the prototypes already now we're already doing the prototypes of um, of the model two and model three. So this, they'll this be is the angel angel one production. angel one right the angel, the angel yeah. one yeah yeah. Which so is... the angel one will be Chinese and the angel two and three will be this... um, out of Cole Clark Bayswater. So there are differences. I covered that as well in the video with Miles. There are differences in spec, and you should be aware of that. But they are much more affordable as well. So yeah. yeah. But you've also taken that idea and applied it to a more expensive guitar for people that want a loud, like we just talked about, a louder, like more yeah. traditional acoustic kind of sound. So what what's the difference between like an Angel 3 and the Studio Series? Are well, you talking about the standard Angel? Completely different bracing pattern. The Studio Series have, mm. have all got a bracing pattern designed by a fellow called Chris Wynn. We had a, a fellow used to make, um, he makes... He lives, he's moved to France now, but um, he, he's actually in Australia at the factory as we speak. But um, he was, he'd bought a villa in France and then came back and he knew Miles really well. And it was on my plate to do, but I've got really locked into the electronic side of things. And it was on my plate to do a different bracing pattern so we could have a different series of guitars. Because the other ones were basically designed quite a few years ago and they were designed for the pro players. And we thought it'd be really good to have something that you could take out like that, but maybe a little more um, attention to getting the volume up. There's that, there's that thing about strength versus tone, and where where you say people are saying our guitars are soft, it means they're not they're not resonant because we've made everything a little stronger. We've over engineered the guitar a little bit, so it will survive the gigs. It'll survive getting thrown around and mm. taken into to atmospheres that it shouldn't be in, like sweaty restaurants or sweaty gigs and or near the sea somewhere where we get them in with with uh, salt in in the uh, preamps you know green wow. corrosion from from um high humidity like up in darwin it, it can have an average of 90 percent humidity so they have to survive that the glues and the woods have to survive that whereas the studio series we're thinking it's more that you could still take it to a gig if you want to just the same as your um, very expensive Martin. If you've got a controlled gig where you know where the guitar is going to be and your audience is not going to be right on your, you know, sometimes you're, you've you got the crowd only three or four feet away and you get, I don't know about you, but I've been hitting the mouth many times with a microphone where something's been hate, dancing a it. bit vigorously and the mics come back and hit me in the teeth. Yeah. So uh, the studio series are designed to be more resonant. So they have a completely different bra bracing pattern designed by Chris Wynn. And uh, they actually sound fabulous. And if you mm. if you have a regular angel, um, it will really complement your existing one to have the studio series as well. It's just a fabulous sounding guitar. When are these shipping? <laughs> um, you'll have to talk to Miles about that because I'm I'm in the cupboard, like I said. I'm wow, really working on. Things. I will. I'll be. I'll be calling him after the night. No, I won't. But that does no, sound really not my thing. It does sound really appealing. I mean, I just I just stuck up and said I like the way my Angel Three sounds, but now of course you know the, the gear fan in me wants to try the Studio Series as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
No, but hang on now. I don't want to get confused here. This is called the Studio Series. We'll look at that now. This is the this is the Chinese assembled, finished in Australia model, right? This is the this is the one series. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But the, I thought That's the Studio the Series. Year. I thought the Studio Series was the more expensive version. The Studio Pros, I think they'll be called. Probably. Ah, okay. Okay, the pro. So you have to talk to Miles on that one because that's all okay. marketing. But I think the Studio Pro will be, will be the um, Australian made ones. I think. Yes, they will be. Yeah. But don't yeah. don't don't quote me on that one. It's, yeah. It's they they they're, they're going to be for the Martin fans that want a Cole Clark basically. So I do yeah, need yeah. to try. They'll, they'll I... stack up against our existing range of Australian built guitars. Right. Not that the Chinese the Chinese ones are just beautifully made and they will work really well and they're affordable. And a yeah. lot of guys might might prefer to take a fifteen hundred dollar here to a gig rather than their three to four thousand dollars three series or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's I think it's great, and I mean, <clears throat> other companies do it, right? Fender do it, Martin do it, Taylor do yeah. it. So why shouldn't you? I think it's great, and you can you still make the other ones. That's why I always say the guitar companies, you still make the other guitars, so you can buy them too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tony Norris, we did a tour last December, blown away. Ah, uh, studio recording. I've just had a, I've just had a message from Lloyd when I said studio oh. pro. He's just sent me, thanks Lloyd, if you're listening. Hi Lloyd, I'm <laughs> sure he is. Studio <laughs> recording. You know, we, oh, studio recording. Okay. Yeah. I may have to check those I out. I don't know that probably, but. And we may have to get Lloyd on here one of these days to do some blues shredding for us because we, he's never been hey, on the hey show. Hey, Lloyd, send, send either Aaron a message <laughs> or me and, and say if you're up for it. I think he'd be up for it. I, yeah, I want, I want to find a way to plug him in so he can just play the guitars for us. That would be cool. He's about to go to Canada, I think, for here. That's a message hey, coming in, I think. He's Greetings on the way. Canada. No, he is watching from Canada. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah, yeah. And Miles is here too. Miles is here too. Everyone's joining us now. Where have you guys been? Uh, he's We've been on for that. Sure I'm, um, making sure I'm earning my pay. <laughs> We've been on for an hour and a half, Hello, guys. Miles. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. So he he was answering about availability. Guitar Guitar has plenty of guitars on the way. Very cool. True hybrid should be in every store in a month or two. Oh, that puts Very pressure cool. on us. <laughs> yeah, you got to get building guitars. Um. Yeah. Andrew said, thanks for the blessing. That's all I needed. Appreciate the information. That was my blessing that he can go out and buy a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't wait to hear about that in a future uh, live stream, Andrew. And uh, Randy arrived and said, I just arrived. I'm very happy. Happy to be here with you. My keyboard is acting up. And the last message was from Miles saying, guitar, guitar, has plenty of guitars on the way true hybrid should be in every store in a month or two he told me the true hybrid is the best selling guitar model that you make yeah right and it makes sense it, is. it totally makes sense well this has been great and thanks for bearing with us i, I was just thinking uh, halfway through this stream i haven't met i've never you have to understand paul and i have never even spoken before i probably messed up there i probably should have given you a call last week to get to know you a little bit because this oh, was no, completely this we've basically got to know each other in real time on the internet and I kind of wanted to do that because the face, the face to face is always um, a lot better meeting people, I think, than than um, a telephone call. But we, but can my point, say we my, know each other now. But my point, yeah, I kind of wanted to do this like this because I knew if I phoned you on on FaceTime or on the phone, I knew I would just have the same conversation with you anyway. So I thought we might as well just do it on the internet I'll and record it. it. Yeah, the, <laughs> so everyone yeah. can everyone can benefit from it. And Lloyd, oh, Lloyd said, um, say the word, I'm in. Well, Lloyd, so Lloyd's currently on tour. Check out, if you're in, actually, um, Boomer is in Canada. And Lloyd is now going to be touring in Canada right now. So Boomer, you should check out his website and go and see him. That'd be great if you could go and see him. And I hope one, I'm in, I'm in New York. I hope one day Lloyd comes out to New York. And like I said, I hope I come out there some, sometime. Um, but Lloyd he's said he's in New York. I know. I saw a picture of him um, under Times Ooh. Square or where it was. I hope he didn't come. I hope he didn't. I hope he, didn't, I hope he didn't, uh, not call me when he was here. You just put him yeah, under the that under was a the long, fire. Long time ago, I think. <laughs> but yeah, we, we didn't really know each other until recently. But um, um, we'll definitely get him on for a live stream. We have got to figure out a way to plug him in. Um, yeah, I was going to say get him get him to um to put a guitar on. That'll be something really special. Yeah, and I also want to ask him like how he sets his preamp, if he's got preferences on strings and things like that. Um, Sam says, love my Angel 2 uh, Redwood Blackwood. It sounds just as good unplugged as it does plugged in. There you go. So he likes the sound of it unplugged. Yeah. So, so some of this stuff is just personal um, too. 
Miles said, I've been listening, just hiding. He's been he's been watching us, Paul. <laughs> Let's finish That's finish with my finish with my question that got us to have this thing, because I was asking Miles, I was asking every co- guitar brand at NAM about stainless steel frets and acoustic guitars, because a lot of a lot more companies use stainless steel frets now in electric guitars. Only a couple use them in acoustic and mostly carbon fiber guitar companies. And I asked him about them. I was trying to convince him to put them in a Cole Clark for me because I want a Cole Clark with stainless steel frets. And it would be my fault. It would be my you're, fault. You're, you're, the, you're, you're the wall. You're the wall. So can I'm you tell wall. us Can you tell us why you... Yeah, I'm just curious. I just want to know what, why, what are your thoughts on I'll, stainless I'll steel frets you. and I'll acoustic? exactly. Um, okay. They don't make bells out of stainless steel. That should tell you something. They don't make um, what? They don't make bells out of stainless steel. Bells. A bell. So you, you know, so you, so you, so you think it affects the, the tone no, no, of the no, guitar? It's more than that. No, as okay. a as a guitar repairer builder, um, the the coupling of the fret into the fretboard is really important. If you took, in, in fact, when I was teaching setups and whatever, I'd take a strap neck that was off the factory that where the frets had been pressed. You give those a tap with a hammer and they're quite dull. You, you take a, another one where you put a stainless steel fret in. And because the stainless, stainless steel fret is unbending, it doesn't actually sit right down. I mean, they can press them in all they like, but they don't sit as nicely into the fretboard as uh, the nickel silver frets. So when you, when you first radius a fret to put it into a fretboard, you slightly over radius it and you tap it in. And as you tap it in, it conforms to exactly the shape of the fret, the fretboard, and uh, because the, you basically take the spring out of the the fret as you're hitting it, and it gets slightly harder as as you're doing that. Like copper, when you when you first heat copper, it goes soft, and when you hit it hard, it goes it goes hard. So if you have a a fretboard hand fretted with nickel silver frets, the frets are right down on the fretboard, and you get best coupling. And you hit that with a hammer, and it's a good solid thud. And it goes right through the neck. So I've not found that experience when I've been putting stainless steel frets in. And I certainly, I managed luckily to talk. I've got a friend of mine that's got a, a late 60s, early 70s, Les Paul. And he's right keen on, very keen on stainless steel frets. And luckily I managed to convince him to, um, I think the people think that they're going to last a lot longer. They're harder to work. And if you don't get the tone out of them, and most people get a lifetime if you're a player that plays four nights a week. You may um, need to replace your frets every couple of years or so, but it's mm. a small price to pay. If you've got a valve amp, you need to replace your tubes every year or two. So yeah, I'm I'm the I'm the wall insofar as Ma, uh, Miles came up to me and said, "Look, there's a lot of talk about this," and I said, "Don't do it. <laughs> They're not in well, Martins for a good reason. They're not in Taylors for a good reason, unless you get certain models that they can put them in." I. You know, we'll have to agree to disagree on this. I have a guitar. I have a guitar from your neighbors with stainless steel frets on it, and I love it. I love the frets because I like the feel of them. I like the fact that they last a long time. Mm. And um, yeah, that's me. I, I, I gig four nights a week. I think a lot of people, a lot of people play Cole Clarks, do gig full time, and I don't really want to deal with that. I actually switched from my last Cole Clark because I went mm. through the frets, and I didn't want to deal with refretting it. I just want the guitar to be the same way longer but you got uh, like, harder versions of stainless you got harder versions of um nickel silver frets too you know right. you got frets that'll last longer there but let me tell you this that um i'm not saying that i wouldn't pick a guitar up some of the music man guitars that i've picked up that have got stainless steel frets um sound really good but you've got to factor that into the tone of the instrument too if you had two angels that sounded identical in tone which is unusual but if you did and we rip the frets out of one and put a set of stainless steel frets you might change your mind <laughs> so I've, I'm I'm blessed in one sense with knowing the outcome because I get the guitar brought into me for a refret, so I hear it when it's got its existing frets in, and then I hear it when the frets changed. And when people used to come in with their telecasters and they had these old ca- telecasters with baseball thickness necks on base baseball bat um, thickness necks on them, and wanted them shaved, we only shaved one or two. And we, when somebody else came along, we'd say, "You wear, you're going to lose a lot of your bass response." And the guitar will not be the same sounding guitar, and they go, "Oh, maybe we won't we won't um, shave the neck then." And so, yeah. you know, we we want to get the best out of the instrument, and we're we're already getting a good result without necessarily just needing to go to stainless steel frets. I um, do, I do, and, I do agree. We, I agree with the sound thing, but it's just you know, 
as a as, as a practical standpoint from someone that plays a lot down the neck <clears throat> sure. a lot of nights it's just a, it's just much more practical for me um and like i said i'm not i'm not saying this without any not i mean i haven't compared one guitar i haven't taken the fret set of a guitar and directly compared it yet but i do have electric guitars with them i do have i've had carbon guitars with them and i've got the maiden with them in and i just i just i, I like mm. how those guitars sound it doesn't bother me one day yeah. i may take a cole clark and have it done like sweetwater will do it they'll they'll switch the frets out and pleck it i might take i yeah, might come do back that to me. If, you, if you ever get that done come back to me and tell me what I, your reaction was if, if it wasn't if it wasn't for finances i would have done it already because i i really yeah, want to yeah. know it's it's, it's it's a very expensive experiment for me to do and that's why i was just wondering if you'd ever done it like like someone like um like lloyd um I, I, well, maybe maybe I'm wrong. I feel like he plays pretty hard, but maybe he doesn't. I'm just I'm just assuming that. I've not done. But it he gigs Cole a lot. Clark. Yeah, so I've that? not done it to a Cole Clark, but I right. um, can tell you that I was never overly pleased when people asked me to put stainless steel frets into an instrument they already had. Mm. I would I always thought myself that this would have been better um, with nickel silver frets in. Mm. And you know, I'm I'm the fellow that has to give him back a guitar that sounds good and. Yeah, I, I wasn't overly confident about the stainless steel frets, and I'm so perfectly cap capable of putting them in. <laughs> so, would you would you consider as a favour to me trying that on the guitar and having some people play it to see what you what they think? Uh, you have to talk to Miles on that one. Uh, well, but, he, um, I, I, it's certainly it's certainly doable. <laughs> you can't but, you um, can't you can't pass that to each other. <laughs> well, that's Miles, my look. I'll, li a, I'll leave it with you. That's my request. No, I know. Okay, well, I'll, I'll text Miles when we're done and say, please put stainless steel frets in the guitar and have a bunch of people play it and and um, see what they think. But what you know, one day I'm going to do it. My my theory is that, like me, I tend to sell guitars when the fret. I've done it with several brands. I've sold a guitar when the frets wore out, rather than have it refretted. So that's that's Maybe that's my a great opportunity. I ha I've I'm, had a good friend of mine who's a, he's a lefty, so it finds it hard to get guitars. And he had four or five strats, and there was a um, early '60s reissue. I'm not sure what year, but anyway, it was a '60s reissue, and it was his least favorite guitar. And uh, mm. we took the skinny frets out of it, and we put a good set of uh, 6105 blues frets that they put in. Um, did all the right work on it, and it, it was became his favorite guitar. It was just just jumped into life with a decent set of frets on it. So, would he have thought that the stainless steel frets got a bit rinky tinky? I don't know. Well, look, Miles gave it the go ahead. So please, uh, make me very happy if you would just try it out and get like get like Lloyd and some people to play it and yourself and and you know and then uh, just see, just yeah. I I I was actually going to every manufacturer at Nam and asking them about it. And um, yeah, there does there does seem to be a a thing, but a lot of people haven't tried it. So um, yeah, Miles well, gives it the thumbs up. Would... Stainless steel frets, that is, yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether Martin would um <laughs> don't know whether Martin would like to make you a D twenty eight with stainless steel frets. It might uh, they, stop short of that one. They use Evo fret wire, Evo gold wire on the modern deluxe series. Yeah. But I hear that that's running out, was well, run out. <laughs> so eventually they might have to switch that to stainless. I don't know. We'll see. But you know actually yeah, you know, know. Martin, Martin aren't aren't they are a traditional company, but I think they're more forward thinking than a lot of people realize. Of course, they have to make those traditional guitars, but yeah, they yeah. do. They do. They they are also. Yeah, they've they've tried a lot of different things too. I asked them the same question. I can't remember the exact answer they gave me. I think they said about wearing the machines faster, which obviously is is going to be a repercussion of that because it's a harder material, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think they were against it, so. No, oh, I'd be great if you could try it, and then we'll do another live stream, and we can have. Yeah, you know. Everything, I've, everything's I'm, important in the tone from from the string. Yeah. By the time it hits the fret, and the fret couples into the fretboard, and the fretboard couples into the rest of the neck, and then it's a big tuning fork into the body. So mm. yeah, everything will change. It'll change. Of tone. course, of course, yeah. everything. That's one thing that everyone says. Everything you do to a guitar <clears throat> changes the tone of the guitar. I'm, I'm not the final arbiter. I just I'm just giving my opinion as a as a technician. And as the results that I've got myself from, mm. um, and I'm I'm not certainly not a traditionalist. I mean, I've got a nice Steinberger with a trans trem on it, and mm. I go both ways. You know, as in, uh, I like the old stuff, pay homage to the to to the um, 
the early strats and tellies and les pauls and whatever right through to the uh the latest technological things in guitar um I, mm. I i've got a guitar synth as well so oh really I, yeah yeah hey hey miles how about putting synthesizers in the cold oh i just i mean you could do you could put that you could put the <laughs> Yeah, you know, it could all be done, but no, no, I just, that's just, that's just one of my, I had those, my, my two questions tonight and that was the two that I had for you. And I want to thank yeah, everyone yeah. for tuning in and asking their questions. I do, I do, I seriously, I do hope you, you, you would, you would try that out. I, I just, um, it's been on my mind for a long time. It's just it's something that's hey, really burnt. It's up burnt, to the chief. If, if my um, mind. I'm, I'm, I'm just one of the, one of the guys that, um, somebody comes in and says, can you do this? And I go, yes or no. And mostly you say, yes, hey. we try. He said he'll try it. So if he doesn't, yep. and I see him at Nam next year, I'm going to be upset with him if he doesn't try it now, because he said he would. <laughs> hey, if he says it, he'll probably bring a guitar to Nam with him with stainless steel frets in it. Yeah, so, hey, why not? That's how you. That's how you test stuff, right? You get people to play stuff and and, sure. and give their feedback. Um, yeah. So uh, it's been so great to meet you, Paul. It's become a very long. It's been a two-hour live stream, but I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. I'm getting to know. I feel like no, I know you good, now, I'm, which I'm, is great. I'm happy to. Um, happy to do the deep dive or whatever you want to call it well not not that much is really is really talked about with a lot of companies and i like to get the i mean you're you've done so much for the community you know like we've got people here saying they're gigging all the time with the with the guitars with your version of the pre preamp in there and <clears throat> it's 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 a big thing so i like i like to get the story behind the people that are doing that stuff um and and i think i i personally find it really interesting which is why i said at the start of the show this is a niche of a niche because I, 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 I go very hard into the technical side of all this stuff. I, I yeah, love yeah. it. I love it. And I think it's great. Um, I, I operate on that level all the time, but um, I, I'm used to people's eyes rolling back in their head when I give them technical descriptions and things. You know, one day I should get all of you on the stream. I can have multiple guests because Miles just said we have put the roll and pick up in the guitar with the synthesizer. I've done one. I've done a, a oh. guitar synth pick up in an in a acoustic. Absolutely. So there you go. You'll I do thought that. You meant you made synthesizer. <laughs> I, I I thought you meant the whole synthesizer, but we we certainly did the um the roll pickup. Pick up. I mean, I've been working yeah. with the synth since day one, the GR five hundred. Yeah, repairing them and and modifying them and whatever. That'd be cool one day to have you all on here and go through some like some like um stories, what you've done in the past and things like you know. You can get as like technical that. as you like. <laughs> no, I, I I mean the, like you like the stories, like like you've tried those yeah. pickups, you've tried different things, things that work, things that didn't. Like I just you know, I, I like I said I find it really interesting, and that's why I have the YouTube channel. So I'm going to let you go. I'm just going to say before we sign off to everyone, if you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell. It really helps me out. And if you've got, for, oh, I know Lloyd's hiding up my, my banner there. Subscribe and ring the bell to the channel um, for content like this. If you've got friends that are interested in acoustic guitars, please send them the stream and ask them to watch it so they can learn about the, what Cole Clark are doing as well. Once again, Paul, thank you for all you do for the acoustic guitar oh, community. Pleasure. And I, w I will thank Miles as well for um, um, getting us in touch with each other. It was actually his suggest suggestion that we do this, which is great. Yeah. And um, also, hi to Lloyd. Have a great tour in Canada. And do reach out to me when you get back and you're rested up so we can get you on as well. That'd be great to meet you and talk about, the, about how you do your settings and strings and all that kind of stuff. That'd be really great. And um, yeah, Dale said, give it a thumbs up. Gave us a round of applause. And... Um, if we get some more um, stuff in the future, perhaps we'll have you back, Paul, um, to, 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 to a follow-up. Yeah, it's you know, been great. The great thing with Cole Clark is you can um, you can actually send an email to the CEO and he'll respond. <laughs> that is true. I see that all the time in the Facebook group. Um, they say, I sent, a, I sent an email to Cole Clark and the CEO replied. They can't believe it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, I do like that. And I, I again, I came to realize at NAM that Miles has all these ideas for practical stuff again you're not just doing i'll say it one more time you're not just doing stuff um for the sake of it you're actually doing stuff to make things better yeah apart from the stainless steel fret okay great so thanks apart again <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just i'm just i'm just messing with you but it's been great i really do hope i get to come over there at some point and and see all this in person because i think that'd be more awesome. than welcome yeah come and have a tour and uh yeah. we can hang out a bit for sure yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. But until I do that, we'll do some more of these live streams. Um, I think it's really cool. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. It's almost time for me to go to bed, and I'll I'll see yeah. you. I'll see you when I see you. All right. No worries. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be on. We'll see you again. Yeah. Thanks again. We'll see you, we'll see you all again later. Have a great night or day wherever you are, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.
said to me I need to get away from you and as I watched her lying next to me I wished for a holiday too Lands. 